All right, so we just did step one of hypothesis testing, um, where we built our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. Um, and they looked like, well, we, we have h sub 0 is our null. And we're going to assume this is true. And usually, for now, this is going to look something like this. Mu x is greater than or equal to mu 0, or this is a number. Mu x is less than or equal to mu 0, or mu x is equal to mu 0. The, mu 0 is always a number. And we're going to have an alternative. This is what we're going to prove true, or uh, maybe prove true, right? This is true if h0 is false. We can only ever prove the null false. We can only ever prove the alternative true. And these the alternatives look like this. Um, mu x is less than mu 0. Mu x is greater than mu 0. Or mu x is not equal to mu 0. And so these correspond just like that. OK, so th that's step one. That's where step one leaves us. Um, once we formulated them properly, and that takes some work and some practice, and we will work and practice with them. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to do step two, which is choose a level of significance. So choose a level of significance. Seems easy enough. We call it, we denote it like that. We call this alpha. And this is a level of unlikelihood or improbability sufficient to warrant disbelief meaning that if we cross if something is sufficiently unlikely right then we're going to reject that belief <clears throat> so, what does this mean? Well, okay. means, in this case, when we worked with confidence intervals, I talked about this a little bit, but it's kind of an annoying notational problem. So, for confidence intervals, a lot of times what you'll see is alpha equals 0 0.90 or 0 0.95 or alpha equals 0 0.99. For hypothesis testing, usually, classically, these are written like this. Alpha equals 0 0.10, alpha equals 0 0.05, alpha equals 0 0.01, and these correspond. Because in this case, on the, on the left side over here, we're saying 90% is what we mean by re reasonable. 95% is like reasonable values, and 99% is reasonable values. Um, in hypothesis testing, usually we want to state our, our what's unreasonable, what's improbable. And so this is saying that results that would occur only 10% of the time are sufficiently improbable to warrant disbelief, meaning if it's less than a 1 in 10 chance, we'll reject H0. This is saying less than a 1 in 20 chance, we'll reject, reject, reject H0. And this is saying less than 1 in one, 1 in 100 chance. That means we'll reject H0. And so you have to be careful. These are telling you how much weight you're placing on the null, right? How much, of, when we say we give it the benefit of the doubt, what do we mean? Well, this means that we'll only accept the null, or fail to reject the null, 90% um, of the time, right? This is saying we'll fail to reject the null 95% of the time. This is saying we'll fail to reject the null 99% of the time. And you don't want to be a stickler, right? The most common is alpha equals 0 0.05. You don't want to you don't want to give too much of the benefit of the doubt to the null, or else you'll never reject it, even if you should. Um, and so choosing your level of significance is kind of important. Usually the question will give it to you, um, but when you're trying to ask a real question, you need to know about how important belief is. Um, how important is it to to know you're right, um, or to believe you're right, before you make that decision? Okay. Um, okay. So let's see. Step three. Well. This depends. Step three is choosing a test statistic. Now, this is going to depend very much on your question that you're asking. There are lots of test statistics that exist. Um, for now, what we're doing is we're doing we're going to begin with hypothesis test of the value of one mean, one population mean 
assuming we know the standard deviation of the population. So we're assuming we know that. We're assuming sigma x is known. Is it really known? Well, probably not, and we'll, we'll relax that assumption in a little bit. But for now, we're going to assume we know it. Okay. Now, what this means is that uh, if we assume we know sigma x, what we want is a test statistic. And what a test statistic is, I mentioned this briefly before, but a test statistic is a characteristic of a sample that has a nice distribution. What I mean by nice is it's got a distribution you can look up on a table. Right? You can't really look up x bar on a table. Uh, x bar is a sample statistic, but no table there. So, what does have a table? Well, if we adjust x bar, this does have a table, right? If we take x bar for our given sample, and we subtract the mean, and we divide it by the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, is the population mean. Well, in this, if we know the mean, the population mean, and we know this, the sampling distribution standard deviation, this is distributed normal, 0, 1, right? which is called standard normal. Usually we denote this thing with z. You can see it's the same thing as our score function, right? z. That has a nice distribution. The problem is we don't know mu x, but what we can say is we want a test statistic that is has a nice distribution under the null, or under h0, which is to say that if our null is correct, z has a nice distribution. Right? The way we do that is we write z again is equal to x bar minus mu 0 over sigma x bar, or x bar minus mu 0 over sigma x divided by the square root of n. And if our null is correct, then this will have a nice, this will be distributed standard normal. What that means is that when we get a z value, right, it's probably going to be between uh, one and a half, negative 1.7 and positive 1.7, somewhere in there, right? Because that's just the shape of the standard normal distribution. So if our null is correct, if our null is correct, then z should be distributed, z, which is x bar minus mu 0 over sigma x bar, should be like this. This means that it would be very unlikely for our sample to pop out something that's all the way over here, or all the way over here. So if our null is correct, we should expect to see a, Z a Z test statistic that shows up somewhere in here. All we're doing now, though, is choosing the formula, right? We're saying, OK, Z, once we get a sample, this will give us a nice, this will give us a result that has a nice distribution, assuming the null is correct. And that's what we care about for right now. Um, we'll do other test statistics later. We're going to do a lot of test statistics. But for now, uh, that's what, what we need. OK. So um, I think I can finish up step four while we're on this video as well. Because once we have our test statistic, the next thing we do is collect data, which we're kind of waving our hands out a little bit. This is messier than it looks like. Um, and compute the test statistic. So in order to do this, for this particular test statistic, let's see what we have. Well, this is the test statistic. Let me write it again. Z equals x bar minus mu 0 over, I'll write the full version, sigma x over the square root of n. So what do we need in order to get z? We're trying to get z. We need an x bar. We need a mu 0. We need a sigma x. And we need an n. So where do we get this stuff? Well, usually you're going to get it from the question, although sometimes you might have to get it from actual data. But this is the sample mean. right? Usually the question will call this the sample mean. This is the uh, mean population mean under the null. Um, which I'll t t explain in just one second. This right here, this is the population standard deviation, which for now we're going to assume we know, um, which means that this will usually be from the question, and this will usually be from the question, and this is our sample size. So, 
you pull these from the question. Uh, the population mean under the null, the place we get that is from your hypotheses. If you stated your hypotheses correctly, it's going to be the thing that's on the right side. And I should note that these hypotheses, they're only shaped like this for these kind of tests. We'll have different hypotheses for different tests. But you can see that mu0 is the thing that's always on the right side of your hypotheses. So you're making a claim about mu x that is related to some value. And that value is what we plug in here. So this comes from h0. That's where you go to get it. Once you have that stuff, then you plug it in. Um, and that's, well, you'll see more of that when we, pra when we do practice problems. But that's what you do. You take this stuff, you get it from the question, you plug it in here, you crunch it. And then what that gives you is it gives you some value of z. And that value of z is what we're trying to get to. Because that value of z corresponds to a probability. What we're trying to see is, well, how improbable is our sample mean given this, this, and this. Right. That's what we're tr really trying to say. So we have a z bar that corresponds, or z that corresponds to an x bar. We want to go from then. We want to take that z and step five, which I'll explain in the next video, goes from that to how likely is it that we would see the z? So how likely is z? Okay, that's steps two through four. Next up is step five, and then we'll do practice problems.